This is chapter 16 through 20 of 14 Ways to Die. 16. You can't be serious, Hannah says, and Emily, at exactly the same time, screeches and hugs me, and these are my two best friends in a nutshell. I'm very serious, I say. Hannah shakes her head. I thought you hated vloggers. I don't hate them. Besides, this isn't vlogging. What is it then? It's reality programming for the online generation. That's a quote from the contract we had to sign. Hannah makes a face and Emily says, well, I think it's brilliant. I've known her so long I can tell exactly what she's thinking as she zones out, daydreaming about what she should wear for the first episode and what this means for her Instagram account. What if I don't want to be involved, Hannah says, and although she would never do that, I play along. Then you'll be a blurry face, but w I care what you think. And she laughs, losing the disappointed parent act. What did your dad say? She asks. He didn't say no. Well, he did, but I convinced him. Mrs. Bradley said yes, after a little bit of emotional blackmail. Emily touches her hair, and I can see the cogs whirring as she figures out if she needs it cut needs cutting before the big day why are you doing this hannah asks so i tell them everything chapter 17 i have to sign more paperwork giving the production team permission to access my phone and my social media accounts this means that every time i get a notification or a message they the producers will see it they can log into everything read everything and if they want share everything with the rest of the world they can put my messages on the viewer screens filling in the blanks what this also means is that I'm going to have to tell everyone not to write anything they don't want the whole world to know. It's all in the welcome pack, which explains what will happen when we go live and how much of my life will be public property. The only place cameras aren't allowed is the bathroom. Everywhere else is fair game. Yesterday, Adrian's team turned our home into a studio. In every corner of every room, there are tiny cameras, and if you're quiet, you can hear them when they turn. The letters from Mrs. Bradley have gone out, and people at school are looking at me differently. They're jealous, Emily says. Some of them, says Hannah. She still isn't completely on board, but she understands why I'm doing this. And when your mom was murdered, people tend not to argue. Sometimes I catch her looking at me like she's trying to figure something out. Like she knows this is out of character and is worried about my well-being. I'm used to those looks, although it's been a while since I, since I saw one. I'm not outgoing. I don't crave attention like some people at school. The others who treat, treat drama as their bread and butter. Maybe I would have if mom was still around. Maybe I would have grown into a completely different person. Now I'm forcing myself to be someone else to get my story across. Eventually, even when your mother was murdered, people stop shouting for you and you have to shout for yourself. Emily shows me her signed permission slip and says, Tell them they can only film my good side, and I'm not entirely sure she's joking. Two weeks from now, I'll be followed by a camera crew, and the weirdness of that is starting to sink in. My mom took some convincing, Emily says. She's worried I'll get a stalker. If, every, if anyone's going to get a stalker, it will be Jess, Hannah says. No one's getting a stalker, I say, although the thought of it makes me feel cold inside. I imagine quitting, calling Adrian and saying I've changed my mind, but I've been doing that all my life, hiding by doing nothing. It's my turn to seek. Chapter 18. As for my channel, I started streaming online, and by the end of the week, my Instagram follower count has gone through the roof. Below a picture of me, taken specially for the show, it says, The Eye, Hunting the Magpie Man. Can she catch the killer? Subscribe here to find out. This is actually happening. It's what I wanted, but the nerves come anyway. Every image of me on screen, every notification, stings in a way I can't describe. I reach for mom's bathrobe and search for her smell. It's long gone, but it still helps. I'm doing this for you, I whisper. Then I imagine how the others feel. Ella, Ryan, Lucas, and Sonia have ads of their own. But this is a competition I have to win. Mom's story is too important to be lost after a month. I Google Ryan's brother, the one who went into that museum and shot, and shot 27 people before blowing himself up. How do you deal with something like that when someone you love turns out to be a monster? I search Lucas's Wikipedia page and watch old clips of his show on YouTube. He looks like every other little kid on TV, and I wonder how much money he made, and if once you have a taste of celebrity, you hate the taste of everything else. Then I Facebook stalk Ella, and there's no sign of a boyfriend, and I wonder which part is the lie, the pregnancy or the cause. And finally, I, 
I search for Sonia and can't find her anywhere. She doesn't have any social media accounts and she's nowhere on Google and I wonder why they chose her. 19. The night before we go live, there's a rehearsal, which seems strange to me because isn't this supposed to be spontaneous? But the director, Danny, who I have never met before, says, We want your introduction to be perfect. We don't want anything wrong in the very last scene. In the, in the very first scene. He's older than me, but he still looks too young to be doing this. When I catch his eye, he stares a little too long, and I feel a blush rise in my stomach and crawl up my neck. Everything about him is neat and tidy. His hair, his clothes, his attitude. While my panic is growing by the second, Danny radiates calm. And I can already see why they hired him. He's not impressed by me. He doesn't treat me like a star. He sees me as something to move around a scene. What do you wear to bed? Danny asks. I'm sorry? When you go to sleep, he says, what do you wear? For a second, I think about telling him where to go. <laughs> but then I realize that for the next month, nothing is private. He isn't being creepy. He isn't coming on to me. He's doing his job. I pull my pajamas from under my pillow and hold them out to him, wishing they were clean and matching. Cool, put them on. He sees my face and says, we need to replicate your wake up experience. After I change in the bathroom, Danny says, okay, pretend it's the morning. I climb into bed and he asks, what side do you wake up on? I don't know. He makes a face. What side do you fall asleep on? My right, I say. Danny nods. We'll go with that. Lie on your right side and close your eyes and action. Danny clears his throat then again and I guess he's trying to tell me something so I do what I think I do when I wake up and when I open my eyes I see Michael the cameraman across the room when I don't do anything Danny waves his hands and mouth and mouths go but I just lie there until he says cut then you can't do that tomorrow that's what this is for to prepare you this is why they'll be here in the mornings even with cameras all over the house they need to ensure the best possible start we do the scene again, and they're happier the second time. While Michael picks, packs up, Danny speaks to me like I'm a real person and not a prop. You'll be fine, he says. I promise. How do you know, I ask. He smiles and, said, and says, I'd be more worried if you were taking this in stride. Each of the five of us has a different director, and I wonder if I got lucky. He's definitely nice to look at, <laughs> and this quick change of character suggests he knows he's a little bit of an asshole at work and is trying to make up for it now. Me too. <laughs> they're, <laughs> they're about to leave when dad appears in the hallway and says, could I have a word? He's looking at Danny and Michael who exchange a glance and follow him into the living room. What now? If dad is having second thoughts, he'd tell me first. At least I hope so. But he doesn't waste words these days, so whatever he has planned, it must be important. Dad sits up, his back straight and his eyes focused, and I remember how big he used to seem to me. He looks at me, swallows and says, I don't agree with this, but I've said yes because of what it means to Jess. For a second, I think that's it. Then he swallows again, breathes out, and says, She's 17. I want you to remember that. Oh, dude. <laughs> I can't help but smile because he's trying to intimidate them. If I ever bring a boy home, I guess this is what will happen. I love it when my old dad shines through. Even at this time, it's pretty embarrassing. You have nothing to worry about, Danny says. We're good at our jobs we only want the best for jessica do you have kids dad asks i have a daughter michael says she's almost six months oh baby that surprises me because he doesn't look like a father he seems a few years older than danny but a lot messier like a hipster who's been living in the wild and you danny shakes his head maybe one day he looks awkward and when i catch his eye he makes a face and i see and i feel a flicker in my stomach and remind myself to wear clean pajamas tonight we understand, Danny, sa Danny says. You want to protect her. We won't do anything to jeopardize that. I hope not, Dad says, and although he's smiling, it sounds like a warning. Chapter 20. When they've gone, I look around my room at the cameras and the empty coffee cups, but I barely see them. All I can focus on is the picture of me and Mom, taken the day I was born, seven years and 52 days before she died. She looks exhausted, but also happy. I'm scared, I tell her. What if this doesn't work? Wherever she is, wherever she isn't, I talk to her, or I talk to myself and hope she's listening. I've made a choice, I whisper. I'm sorry if that makes you angry. I'm sorry if you don't want me filling our house with cameras and strangers and putting Dad through all this again. But I've waited ten years. I've waited so long for them to catch him, but they haven't. I don't think they ever will, not unless something changes. 
I'm scared I'll mess it up, Mom, but I'm terrified of feeling this way for a lifetime. If we made the magpie man, we maybe we can destroy him too. I leave a gap for her to reply with a sigh with a sign or a coincidence, but she never does. She only smiles from the picture by my bed, and that will have to be enough.